Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, please be upstanding for the magnificent extraordinary Beyonce. Thank you so much, everybody. Um, it's wonderful to be here. So, I met JP, I think about two years ago, at, um, at a party in Madrid. Wonderful party. And, uh, and we got talking, and I've always loved, I've been obsessed, well, not always, but I've been come to that. For a good while, I've been obsessed with motivation and success in these sorts of books, and, and, and studying what it takes to develop and improve. And, um, so I sort of gushed onto JP and, and, and told him what I adore. And, and JP said, oh, well, I'm crazy about magic. And so we sort of developed this step, 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 conception of our bromance. And, uh, <laughs> and since then, we've stayed in touch. And, and I've never really done this before. I've never really done a talk about this. I, I obviously, magic is my life. Magic is what I do. But I've never refused to. So um, this may be a little bit extemporized. Um, but we have a test. First of all, first of all, we do a little test. So a little bit like JP stretching. I need uh, everybody, please. Hands up, thumbs up, hands up, thumbs up, hands up, thumbs up. Okay. and then thumbs down. So it's all about focus, right? It's all about focus. I will do some. We're going to do a lot of magic live, right? We do a lot of things today. Uh, but the magic I'm going to do for you is all around focus. I've, I've sort of handpicked things that I think are focus related. Okay, so this is the first. Uh, thumbs up like this. Okay. Thumbs down. And then right hand over left. And thumbs pointing down. Okay, thumbs pointing down like this. And if you just bring it to the shoulder height, just up the shoulder height if you would. Yeah. All together. <coughs> and then together like this, we go with one, two, Shuffle like this. 
uh, as I shuffle you wait as long as you like and you stop any time. Stop. Sure? Yeah. Forwards or backwards? Forwards. 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 Forwards.
as a mentor and, and help you through this stuff. So we did, so every time we came to London, he'd take us this little Lebanese spot sit in the corner and he would um, sort of pummel me with thoughts and I'd always come away feeling a little bit bruised from a lunch with John because fundamentally he, he'd just reveal, like this, he'd reveal to me things that I wasn't working hard enough or I wasn't pushing hard enough or I need to be focused on. And um, so I'd always come away feeling a little bit ruffled. But then invariably would grow into what he had then told me to work on, to focus on. I'd read the book and then come back and, and, and you know, do, do it all over again. It's kind of this eternal like pushing a rock up a, up a hill and Johnny gets the top and, and he throws it down again. But he was remarkable and and saved me. And, and I so much of what, everything that I have now that, that I see as good in my life and positive in my life really stemmed from that relationship with John. Um, everything that, that he gave me, the books that he gave me, and, and the advice. And um, it was about four or five years ago, John, um, John got cancer and he died. Um, but he, um, he was just this insane force. Um, and a very much sort of father figure in my life. And um, so I wanted to pass on stage, uh, you know, more than anything, the books. I think the books, for, for me, have unlocked everything. You, you know, it's so accessible now that the ease with which you can buy a book and have the next day uh, <coughs> or over it. He gave me this, this, you know, over the years, this library of names to go and find and study. So I wanted to sort of pass, though, I mean, if nothing else today, I wanted to pass on, you know, John's book list because. It's remarkable. I'm sure many of you have read many of them, but even if there's one book that you haven't, um, I would implore you to do so because, because I, I feel like in I feel like in this industry um, there's a there's, there's some degree, like magic, like anything, like comedy, music, like, there is a a lot of not white noise, but I, I think the number of truly transformative books and, and beautiful, powerful books I think is a probably a minority, and you walk into a bookshop, you see this bookshelf, people with sort of PhDs and, and made up titles, and it's quite hard to judge what's really worthwhile. Uh, so, so I thought I'd run through. The, these are things that, uh, some of the, some of the um, early emails, and then, and then sort of as we developed, John was thinking, well, if you want to think about this, then we'll read this book. So um, many of these you would have read. Um, one of my favorites is Jack Canfield's The uh, Success Principles. It just sounds super, super cheesy. Jack Canfield wrote the Chicken Soup for the Soul books. And I think, I read this, there are 500 million copies in print. I mean, it's an astonishing feat. And, and he was also very involved with the Ronda Byrne, the sequence work. Uh, he sort of co-wrote that with her. But, but his book, The Success Principles, for me, is, is a source of modern day Carnegie Halloween friends with those people that, you know, in the way that Dale Carnegie went to study people of his age who were very successful, Canfield also went and just meticulously obsessed over these people and distilled what it was that made them successful or happy or powerful or rich or whatever it was. And he put that into this book. So success principles is, is phenomenal. Uh, obviously, Tony Robbins, anything by Tony Robbins is, is great. Um, away from the, the giant within, um, and then to power, I think, is sort of the two of the biggest ones. Robert Kiyosaki, um, I'm sure everybody's here for different reasons today, but um, John, I guess John was the first person to say to me that making money needn't be a bad thing. And I, I you know, I, I think it's, I had in my head that particularly with magic, I could either be this sort of artist with magic or I could be this sort of commercial seller with magic. And I think John made me realize that being commercial and so commercially successful isn't necessarily a bad thing. And, and um, and that you know, if you do want to make money, if that's a part of your goal, which it will never make you happy, but you know, money will obviously give you choices and flexibility and all manner of things. I think having mo money won't make you happy, but not having money will bring problems and stress. <coughs> so, so John really drilled that into me, and, and Robert Kiyosaki, um, uh, phenomenal author. He's he's written again a number of books around this. The Rich Dad, Poor Dad books he wrote. Um, and I think it's a series, he's now written a few with um, Donald Chump. But, uh, <laughs> the, uh, the, 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 the first one that I read was Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And effectively, he's this incredible man. He had a, he had a poor, his real father was, was not very 
commercially minded, his stepfather was very commercially minded, and it's the sort of story of what he took from his father and um, the lessons that he took. So that's great. Uh, the Richest Man of Babylon is a great book. Uh, very, very old book, very timeless, written you know, decades ago, um, but beautiful. Lots of sorts of timeless advice. Um, great book. Uh, Victor Frankl is my number one of all time. Victor Frankl, Frankl, uh, uh, F-R-A-N-K-L, man's sexual meaning. Victor Frankl was a, um, was a, uh, he was a, a prisoner in World War uh, II. He was a uh, psychotherapist. He went, uh, he went through four prison camps, including Auschwitz, and he came out and he lost his mother, his father, his brother, and his wife in the war. And he came out and he, he wrote this book actually in captivity and it, he lost the, the manuscript was destroyed and then he came out and I think he wrote the whole, it's a very short book, it's about 150 pages and I think he wrote it in nine days. And it was first printed in German and now it's become this global bestseller in English. And uh, it's just beautiful and it's, it's all about finding meaning through suffering and meaning even in the most, um, I guess the most despairing of moments, and it, for sure, it's one of my. If, if, if I know, so if, if a friend of mine or a relative loses somebody, I send them this book because it's all about finding strength in, in your most difficult feelings. And, and um, probably as a body, there's a quote that says, "When we can no longer change a situation, we are challenged to change ourselves." And uh, you know, we'll be no better tested by any human being than, than what he lost, you know, coming out of the war and having to restart his life and all the people in his life. Um, so for sure, for, for me, it's one of the best, I think the US Library of Congress boasted one of the 10 great books of all time. One of the, you know, one. Right, okay, so, I mean, it's just, it's on a, for me, it's, it's Bible of life, it's, it's phenomenal. Uh, also, Dale Carnegie, I'm sure you've all read, if you haven't, it's just the greatest book. It's, you know, it's up there, How to Win Friends and Influence People. Again, it's thrown around as this as source of I think very cheesy book, and, and it's sort of misunderstood by the title, but reading it for sure, there's, you know, it's, 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 I think it was first published in the 1930s and, and continues to be virtually the best-selling book of a genre, so how to win friends and influence people. He's also, I've read a, a, another one that I've read last year, I went through a sort of particularly traumatic breakup, and I read this book called How to Stop Worrying and Start Living, uh, which was by having the purple cover, and that's also phenomenal. Uh, he's, you know, he's just, I think, I think for me, what Dale Carnegie and Jack Canfield did was they took the luck out of success. And I think growing up, you can look at people, look at perhaps friends, parents, or people that you know, and say, oh, you know, obviously lucky businessman, or you know, this was fortunate. And I think for me, what, what John did for sure, what Carnegie, what Canfield, um, they've just said that there, there are reasons these people top of their industry, there are reasons that these people dominate their field, there are reasons these people are happy or healthy or whatever it is that, that you want to look for, Th these are the guidelines. And it's the same thing, if you want to be fit, there are rules to, to, to get there. If you want to lose weight, you know, there are, there are strategic rules. And it's not, I think this, as with all of this, it's not easy, right? None of this is easy, being, being the person that we want to be, being, being Attaining our dreams, right, or becoming the person that you would wish to be in any area is never going to be easy, but I, I do think it, it can be very, very simple, right? The, the steps needed to get there aren't particularly complicated. It, 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 you know, it will take day in, day out commitment. You get up in the morning, the last thing you want to do is travel to this place, or, or go to the gym, or eat less, or whatever it is, or, or you know, patch up something with that person, whatever it is, it's, it's hard but it's simple and I, I just think that these kind of books are just a, it's a checklist. If you want this, if you, if, X, if, if you want X then Y, you know, if you want this then this is the way. And Canfield is, is sort of in all areas, I think it touches on finances, relationships, career, um, uh, Carnegie is more, I think more about relationships, relationships with people which are called permeate into all areas of life, but it's, it's, very, it's exactly what it says, how to win friends and how to influence people. Uh, Napoleon Hill, obviously, is just the big daddy of all of this, think and grow rich. Um, I think so many greats would attribute what they have to Napoleon Hill, who's one of the sort of avant-garde torchbearers of this whole movement, and um, think and grow rich. Again, it sounds financial, but it's so much more than that. I'm sure many of you have read this. And then, um, 
two which I read at university, and I've reread them the last year or so, and they've just really blown my mind. I, I think the beauty with all of these books, as John would say, is revisiting them. My grandmother used to say it about um, uh, Dostoevsky. She'd always say, I, I, don't, I don't really read profound it's a Russian literature. But she'd always say, every time you read Dostoevsky, you, and I guess people say it like Shakespeare, you will find something different every time you read it. The same thing, again, with new eyes, right? With fresh eyes. Um, uh, right. In fact, somebody said about Shakespeare, you find that which it is you're looking for, right? You can, you can read a, a play, a Shakespeare play, and you'll just, you'll draw out whatever it is, you'll sort of, it's a reflection of what it is that's in your mind at that moment. And I think, um, uh, be it literature or, or, or these books, um, the important thing, as John would always say, is to reread these books. And he, he, he really instilled in me uh, getting a biro and, uh, and just making a mess of all of these books, right? And now I have this whole coding system. If I'm reading a book, and I'm reading The Power of Now, and it's a mess, because it's so brilliant. But I'll underline, circle, asterisk in the, in the margin. If it's super good, I'll fold the page over, fold it, fold the corner, that's, that's my sort of seven star review, is when, I, when a page is folded. But it just means you can pick up this book, and 20 minutes before bed, you pick up a book that maybe you read three, four years ago, and you're just going through the highlights, right? And, and if you think, you know, I'm lacking this at the moment, um, also, I'm just going to see it. Okay. Can you see, you see that? Okay. Um, <coughs> so, so, yes, so for, for, with all of you, with, with whatever books you have, I think this is so valuable because ultimately, if you pick up a book with nothing, it, with no markings in it, you know, it's, it's a lottery that you're going to read the right paragraph. If you've gone through and you've underlined, circled and it's all there, you can just, you know, you can skip through the important things. 10 minutes before bed, 20 minutes before bed, you go to bed with something really insightful. Just to sort of think on as you sleep or as you wake up or whatever. If you haven't got that long, it's the best way. So that's invaluable. Take a pen and just go crazy. Um, highlighters fade. Don't use highlighters. So do fade. <laughs> Learn that. That's a real thing. You open a book, it's like, it's all gone. It's all gone away. Uh, so there are two. So two other books: Urquhart Tolle, The Power of Now. Um, again, I, it's just blowing my mind. And, and I read this. John gave me the, the title years ago, and I'm rereading it now. And it just—it's a whole fresh. I mean, it's a different book to me now. Um, certainly one of my top five: The Power of Now. Um, and I think the other one's called A New Earth, which is a follow-up book. So Urquhart Tolle, T O W G. -L -G. Um, Phenomenal, great book, just about living presently and not not being caught up in what's happened or fretting about tomorrow. You know, it's it's, it's about the, obviously the notion that now is all we have, now is all we will ever have. Anything that happens to us will only happen now. And uh, explain it a little better. When you write the book, go. If you saw millions of copies, but it, it's brilliant, really brilliant book. And then the last one is uh, A Road Less Travels by M. Scott Peck. So it's called A Road Less Travels, um, which is relationships. And, and, um, and again, you know, you look the sort of breakfast TV show, books I think coming out all the time, uh, 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 M. Scott Peck nails it. And, I, and this was written um, 20, 30 years ago, I think it was in the 70s. And what's remarkable about this book is it took seven years to make any kind of bestsellers list. He wrote it, it was turned down by a number of publishers, as many of these books are. It was then published, and then um, it, yeah, it took seven years, it went nowhere. And then suddenly, I think, hit a few book clubs, and obviously grassroots, it came up to a position, and then stayed on the New York Times bestseller list for it's something like a decade, over, over the period it's been there for 10 years or something wild. And it's, it's just about relationships, and it's about, um, again, it's, it's if X, X equals Y, right? It, it sort of takes out all the impulses and emotional um, wranglings of relationships. It, it sort of, I think, demystifies it um, a lot. So, so, so those are the Jack Campbell, Tony Robbins, Kiyosaki, Victor Frankl, Dale Carnegie, Napoleon Hill, and Scott Peck, and other guys as well. And as John said, John said, um, I, and I can send you all this later. I can I give links to JP and you can send these all on Amazon. Very, uh, nothing, you know, Amazon now, they're like three, four pounds a book and, and they will just revolutionize um, 
your mindset and, and everything. Um, so John said, never stop reading. What you feed your body will, to a large extent, dictate your health. Obviously, I mean, we are all cars, right? We are all engines, and if you put fatty milk into a petrol tank, it's, this isn't going to work. <coughs> and we are the same. And, and, um, and you know, JJ is a specimen of a man and meticulous in all areas. Uh, but, you know, uh, that's, yeah, that's it, input is output. And then he said, the same goes for what you feed your mind. You know, and as you know, as you're all here, you obviously read these books and think about this, and, and I'm sure read a lot of mine and watch videos. And um, it's just crucial. Never stop. You know, never stop reading. John, John, I think would read about two or three books a week, and uh, just never stop. Never, never stop. You'd have, um, you'd have uh, one, two, two books. One would be on sort of personal stuff. One would be on more business focused areas, and then you'd always have a sort of piece of so uh, yeah, never stop reading. Ever stop reading. You know, every book is like a log on the fire. And you just got to keep that, keep that going. Um, he said, yeah, the last line on his first email, and um, I, I might pull up some of his emails later. Um, he said, just do what you love, and money will follow. And again, it's not to say that money is everything, but. Um, at that stage, leaving university, I was so, so miserable, and I, and I had no confidence, I had no thought of where life might go, and I never, I, mean, I, I obviously was passionate about magic. How many grams actually like, do card tricks as a living, you know? And, and so I was in this, this place, and um, that was it, we just said, Invariably brought me around to the idea that I could go into the city and sit at the desk and shuffle stuff. And sooner or later, I'd throw it all in and I'd burn my suit and I'd get that on the gym. That's why I don't stop that because you and I know that you're just wasting time doing anything else. And I think that's you know that's the same for a lot of things. That just just get into it, get amongst it, and and, and everything else will fall into place. You know. Um, and then he said, get rid of all the negative people too. And I think that's part of the sort of mindset. And that's something I've been very, very strong about, and I've really, it's been a huge part of making my life easier and happier and more productive. It's just, obviously growing up, so many doubters, you know, parents and close friends and people that just, I think, question it. Some, obviously, much more than others, that this will ever be a success or ever go anywhere. And you just got to, you got to, you know, you just got to remove these people. And it is difficult. You got to pull up the weeds and just take these people out and and not be around them and be they spouses or relatives or best friends or anything. You just, I'm sure we all have those people who you go for lunch, you go for dinner, you walk out, and you just feel like you've been there. You've just, you've, you've. It's been a one-way street of energy, right? And and you've spent the whole time telling them not to worry about the same shit they were talking about three years ago, right? And and they've given you nothing. And I just I've become very cutthroat and and um, and that was from John. You know, he really drilled that into me the importance of, of not hanging around with people. But basically if if they're not if you don't leave lunch or dinner or a weekend or whatever it is feeling better about yourself, they're adding nothing. And and it's sort of that simple and I think it can be filled with all kinds of details. Uh, but fundamentally, if somebody's making you feel better, you know, without a real valid reason, you're the only person that likes, or whatever it might be, then just move away because they're, they're doing nothing. And um, you know, everything, every day, everything you do, every person you should in some way move you forwards. Um, there's a quote, and I, I read this years ago, and I, I can't remember who it was. It was like Mae West or somebody. Uh, and I've never been able to find it again. The place. Uh, it, it, it was. It was. I think it was. It was either a sort of English duchess, or it was a Hollywood um, old school actress. And <laughs> and, uh, and I, I've never found it again. But it, it was basically the quote was, "I will only ever have dinner with two types of people: people that make me laugh, or people that further my career." Mm. That's so comforting. But it's so true. It's like if somebody doesn't make you feel good. Or somebody doesn't in some way move you forwards in what you're doing. See ya. See ya. Yes. Is it? There we go. Thank you so much. Okay. Scratch that itch. Yes. Okay. Marilyn Monroe. 
So it's basically that. It's a lovely thing, and it sounds very simplistic, but I think, you know, making you laugh, making you feel good, or doing great things for you. So yeah, you know, life, too, life just is too short. And, um, and yeah, I think that's important. So, so cut them out. Uh, so John, anyway, John was amazing. John gave me all, these, all the books, all his advice, and um, I have this folder. I still have this folder that I'll read and, and get very teary about of all his emails. And um, I'll just I'll show you his last, and no, I won't, I'll cry. But his last email, his last show email, um, I wrote to him because he, you know, so he had cancer, and then um, he was so strong about it. He never told me his age. He would always stop the question. And, um, and so he got cancer, and then he was being treated, and, and it was interesting now, because he knew what was happening, and, and um, so he knew what was happening better than anyone, because he read everything about it, and, um, and I just, I think I saw him about three, three weeks before he died, and, and then I just wrote him this message, and he wrote this, this, you know, this incredible email back, um, and, and sort of signed off, and, and we had this very much father-son relationship, and I did, you know, I knew him for like four or five years, but I think there's no doubt in my mind that the things he gave me um, have affected my life positively more than perhaps anybody else. And so much part of that is these books and these mentalities and these, these truisms that, you know, we all read these things and these, these phrases and these, these sort of trite proverbs and these things that's very easy to gloss over. And I, I don't know whether you have the same, whether you sometimes something happens in your life and you go, ah, oh, that's what that phrase means, you know, and it's you know, like whatever the phrase is, it's something you've become so accustomed to, and then suddenly it clicks into place, and it suddenly takes on a whole new dimension, a whole new meaning. Um, so, if nothing else, those books, uh, chew through them, pour them, and, and ingest them, and keep them, draw over them. Um, do we have uh, do we have a lovely lady who would wish to be a person? <laughs> Anybody? Madam, yes. Oh, Madam, yes. What is your name? Sasha. Sasha. Big hand for Sasha. Woo! -hoo! Two, and then we 
or something like this. Okay, so we go one, two, it's all up to you. Which one? <laughs> which one? <laughs> it's up to you, it's all up to you. Ah, <laughs> uh, she's oh. right. I need it for magic. Um, <laughs> just abuse me with powers. <laughs> right, so Sasha, good. This is very good. Now, I'm glad you caught it on fast. So now comes the uh, now comes the meat of the sandwich, right? So uh, box and cards, and as before, 52, 52 little little babies, right? So uh, Sasha, would you shuffle, please? As wish, we'll shuffle. <laughs> Good shuffle, solid shuffle. Excellent. Excellent. Sasha, you're going to grab a card, you're going to reach it. Uh, this could be virtually virtually any card you wish. Uh, <laughs> anyone, anyone you wish. Uh, go deep. That's her. No, no, if you, if you wish to change the second. Change up. If you wish. You have to have with this. Um, would you hold the card? Just hold it against you. Okay, so it's a black card. Correct? King of Clubs. Yeah. It is the king. It's a lovely thing. So what a lovely thing. What a lovely thing. Hold tight. Um, you're going to grab another. I'll tell you what, you're going to grab a card, red uh, number card, just because you're going to write your name. So um, a card with space. Good. Okay. Now it doesn't matter if I say Ace of, Ace of Times. It's a lovely card. It's a lovely card. Um, Sasha, would you would you sign your name on the card, please? Pen. No, no, we have this. No, we have this. No, so thank you. We have. Um, I think. I think if I may, just in a just in a tassel, so a little little sh little sharpie, little sharpie, <laughs> and you're going to sign right across, right across. Good. Okay. Done. This is Sasha's unique. Bespoke Ace of Diamonds, and uh, the Ace goes in. This, right. This. And Sasha are going to grab. You grab. You grab a card. Grab one. Yeah. All, all different. Would you show your card? What do you have? What do we have? Look at this. What a lovely, <laughs> lovely choice, <laughs> Sasha. As we rehearsed, it was just as we rehearsed. It was just as we rehearsed. Uh, <laughs> Sasha, let's go again. You say stop. She goes, right? And she slips. Uh, Ace of Diamonds. Holding the it's about focus. It's all about the focus. And looking in the right place and the wrong place. Because here, uh, I think the ace is gone. I believe the ace is gone. Uh, no longer here. Ace is now underneath um, thing, underneath the card box. On the table. Miles away. If I Lift it up. Would you have a little lift? There is a card. You see, there's one card. Would you show? Would you show everyone the card? Yes. Yes. Very good. 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 Very
somebody, somebody saw this quite fast, yes. And, and obviously uh, Sasha with the, with the paper. There are things, um, again, with this magic that sort of is all about focus and tension and what we call as <coughs> misdirection. Um, there, are, uh, there are things you're holding on to, right? And I think as with life, there are opportunities that will sometimes be right here and you'll recognize them. But for me, a huge part of um, the good things that have happened have been, <coughs> um, I guess, goal setting and being able to then focus on when something or somebody, when you meet somebody um, and they say, well, this is what I do, you can leave that lunch and never talk to that person again, or you can go away and think, actually, I want to get here, and they, they could be a part of this journey, and that actually could be the greatest opportunity or a contact or a link or a reason to, for, for something. So I think, um, I hope in some small way, you know, there are things that we are very, very good at as humans, and there are things that we're not very good at. Just the human mind is not very good at, and um, focus is one of those, right? We can only ever focus on, on one thing at a given time. Um, that's what we make use of as magicians. This is what we exploit as magicians. Um, people's inability to ever focus, man or woman, on two things at once, right? Um, so, so it's fun. It's a lot of fun, and and I, I feel like having a very clear goal, and um, um, and 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 reinforcing on a regular basis what it is that um, um, what it is that you want to achieve on any level, right? Health, fitness, career, love, whatever. Um, opportunities will present themselves and, and be clear to you in a way that they will pass you by like elements of this and every week you might have three, four, five opportunities or people or whatever it is that the mind just won't see, it just won't cotton on to it because it's you know it's it's not part of that plan. Whereas as soon as that plan is there you'll be carried in the arms of whatever dream it is you have and these will be sort of great flashing lights. So I'm a, a big believer um, in that. Um, so oh, this is fun. So I did this with JP the other day. And I, um, this is a, it's a lovely test. So how many people just show hands? How many people have watches on right now? Most people. Yes. Okay. So hands down. Would you all those with watches? Would you cover it like this immediately? Another thing. Okay. And um, would you just think in your head? Do you have? I love this. I love this. <laughs> do you have a second hand? No looking. Do you have a second hand on your watch? Now, bearing in mind that you look at your watch, you might have had this a year, 10 years, five, whatever it is, you'll look at this maybe 30 times a day, 50, 100 times a day. Some of you, some of you, this will be very clear, some of you will be questioning this now. And it's, it is kind of difficult to think, I don't, I don't know, I don't know whether you do. So in your head, I want you just to assess, do you have one for sure? Would you bet 100 pounds on this? Would you stake your life on this right now? Or are you not quite sure? So settle on this. I don't know, people sure? Are you very sure? Yeah. Kind of sure? Do you have a second hand? Do you have a second hand is the question. Very sure? Is anybody unsure? Okay, so whatever it is, have a look. Allow yourself a look, check, and then cover up. Cover up straight again. Were people wrong, right? Who was wrong? Anyone wrong? A couple of people? Yes, thank you, Emily. Lovely, Emily. Uh, so second test, second test, cover it up. Um, do you have, around the edges of your watch, do you have dots, do you have dashes, do you have English numbers, do you have Roman numerals? Um, are they all the same, or is it just the three, six, the nine, the twelve? Do, what is it? No looking, peeking, naughty, naughty. Uh, what do you have? Again, is this very clear to you? Um, if you don't have, if you don't have a watch, you can do this with your phone. Again, looking at it all the time. Do you know the, let's say, bottom two icons in the bottom left of your home screen? Do you know what those are? Right. Again, you're looking at this all the time. Okay. So I think again, think in your head, what is around the edges of your watch? <coughs> or if you have a smartphone, what is, what are the two icons just in your head on the bottom left of your home screen? Right. What are those two icons? Okay. So think of that. Allow yourself a look. Have a little, have a little peek. 
check the phone, check the watch, cover up the cover up the watch, cover up the watch. People wrong, people right or wrong? Right, wrong, right, wrong, ish. Right, good. Cover up, cover up, look at the phone. And the last thing, and this is lovely, is so I guess some of you have checked your phone, some of you some of you looked at your watches twice now. My last question is, what time is it? <laughs> and you've been looking at this, right? It's been in front of your face. Have a look, whatever it is, it's, it's 12.45. But this is, it's a great example, right? You're just looking at the wrong stuff and, and or looking at the, the, the wrong part of it. And I, it's such a lovely test and it's such a, it's such a lovely, um, I guess, reminder, again, of just the human mind, right? You can be staring at this thing and yet so unfamiliar with it. And I think, um, I think opportunities can, can be like that, and, and um, again, it's that process, you know, it's, it's seeing things with new eyes, it's looking at something and, and suddenly noticing the opportunities in people around you, places around you, things around you. So that's fun. Um, I'm going to try one, what have we got? I'm going to try one last thing. Yes, okay, so, um, do we have um, Game of Thrones people? Are there Game of Thrones people? Yeah. I don't actually. Do, I don't actually. Um, I'm not good for it. I don't actually. I don't, I don't read. I will confess. I'm not a. What are they called? What's a Game of Thrones follower? Is that a name? Is that a collective? Now I don't know. Uh, would you please mind have a flick? The peruse. The look. Um, this one of my favourite, most favourite um, pieces of magic. And again. As with all of this today, um, I think without exception, I'm limiting the magic. This is all focus-based. So in terms of method, I won't go into method, uh, but it's all sort of focus, right? Um, so I'm going to try this with the front. Uh, Madam, would you please, would you say stop? Would you um, pop that in a pocket or something, or just no look, without looking at it, uh, just hold it somewhere safe? You uh, again, um, pocket or somewhere safe, no looking. Uh, so, I come to you. Sure? Would you please um, pocket somewhere, no looking? Anytime. You're short. You carry on. Stop here. <laughs> right here. You're short. Would you please insert a lovely, maybe in a perfect. Okay, so four, four cards. We'll come back to those. And we have the books, the books, grab these. So I can promise you these are real, right? And you can do this with um, virtually any book. I use these because they're very thick and people are familiar with them. But they have um, 800 pages, right? 800, 900 pages, I think, in both. This is the, I think, the original. And then Clash of Kings, one of the other 85 Game of Thrones books. Um, so I'm going to go. Here, man, would you please you say stop? I'm going to run my finger, you say stop, wait as long as you like. Sure? Can you see um, Can you see the first word on this page? Just in your head, not out loud. Just the first word there. Can you see that? Yeah. Can you see this? It's this first word here. Just on the first word on the page. Yeah? You hold that, please. Hold that. Would you run through it, just make sure it is real? I grab this, and if I come, uh, man, would you please you say stop? Sure? Is there a page number here? Yeah, can you remember that page number? Yeah. Oh, no, can we go again? <laughs> Refresh. Yeah. yeah, happy, happy. Uh, page number here. Yeah, see that? Okay, would you please hold that? Would you make, please make sure all the numbers are different, right? Um, we have a random word. Okay, good. Um, and a random page number, I hope. Yeah? Okay, so we're going to try this. Who attempts this? Uh, Let's start with a number. So obviously the number has to be limited to maybe one in maybe eight, nine hundred pages. Just in your head, would you please think of whatever the number is? Just sort of visualize the number. Yeah, see it on here. And just project. Okay, I'm going to go with this. So, random number, they're all different. 
please. What was your what was your number? Two hundred and five. Very same, the exact number, right? Except it's a lovely thing. It's a lovely thing. Um, but of course, limited, maybe a little bit limited to 900 pages. So we don't have all the words, right? Um, English word, it's not a sort of Dothraki village or something more of a challenge, but it's an English word. Okay, so would you please you think of the word and just in your head, you're going to say the word, just in your head, not out loud. Yeah. Facilitates the process. So it's probably less impressive. So just just inside, like this. I sense I sense we'll be close to this. Um, think. This. Maybe this. It may be. IMG. Maybe this maybe close to this. Feels like a good long word, solid word. Uh it's a good what was it? Oh hang on. Just feet. Sure. Feet. Not a long word. <laughs> what is your first name? And lovely Angela. Lovely Angelina, that is, this is very fortunate, very fortunate, very well. Uh, so one word in thousands, tens of thousands plus from the mind of George Martin. Uh, but we have one final piece, where's Fiona? Focused. Lovely Fiona, lovely Fiona. Uh, now just to be, to be forthright, um, we were introduced briefly before, and I just said, if you're happy to do this as the climax, um, then I would have you think of a number, I think we said. Um, would you confirm, I, I just said to you, I'm going to have you think of a random number, right? I said not your birthday or a sequence or anything that I could have guessed. And I said to you, um, sort of long, complicated number, whatever it is, your choice. Obviously, you've never told me this number, correct? Would, would anybody here know this number? Is there anybody here? There's nobody I could have gone to and said, what would Fiona say, right? Just because sometimes people think that I memorized the complete works of George Martin, or <laughs> in some way there are mirrors in the gold little tigers in the books, or something, gimmick, whatever it is, I like to do this. So I have somebody think of a random number, and I will attempt the very same thing. Okay. So for me, this is it's as pure, it's as beautiful as magic gets. It's, it's literally... Um, this is what goes back, it goes back to the Greeks, this idea of telepathy, right? It's this sort of mind reading. Um, so Fiona, if you would please, just in your mind, you're gonna, uh, whatever this number is, you're gonna see this number, right? And just project. Okay, with your right hand, you put your right hand like this. I want you to imagine typing those numbers. So without moving, you're gonna walk up to a sort of um, cash point and you're just gonna imagine yourself without moving, just type in whatever those numbers are. Okay. Oh, hello. There we go. Uh, okay, good. Thank you. So we go with this. I'm going to go with this. This is a half guess. Um, <laughs> Fiona, we are not related. We are not. Friends, nor lovers, we were introduced moments ago. We haven't set this up, no. promise. promise. You haven't, there's no way I could know this number, correct? This is literally a thought in your head. What was your, what's your number? 1275. 1275. You sure? That's okay, you go with that. That's your wish. Um, 1275. This, which I think we can probably generally agree, is not a perfect match. It's not, <laughs> not a blueprint. Right? It's not a blueprint. But we go back in our minds a little bit. 
She went, if we go back five, ten minutes, we had a lovely Sasha. So she, she vanished. No, she's reappeared at the back. That is real magic. Uh, Sasha. Uh, Sasha's over there. Uh, and so Sasha shuffled the cards. We then had a random number of cards. Um, would the people with those cards please stand up? Would you hold them uh, against you for a moment? Don't, don't look at the cards. Just hold them sort of against your chest. Clutch them like an asp. Like an asp to your chest. And would you just uh, face forward for a moment, please? And forgive me, Fiona, it was one, seven. One, two, one, one, two seven, five. So we're going to go with this, ladies and gentlemen, final stage. Uh, four random cards from a shuffle deck. A random thought of number like this. Okay, so we're going to go, uh, we'll go this side. we we'll start at this end. Madam, please. One, um, <coughs> one would be a, an ace. <laughs> it's a good start. It's a very good start. As the Treff, Ace of Clubs. Uh, one, two, seven, five. Madam, our second card, would you please reveal? We have a two second card. Random shuffles cards. A random thought of number. So the third, we need a seven. We please have a look. Seven of Clubs. Seven of Clubs. The final card. One, two, seven, five. Shuffle deck. Random number. Madam, would you please reveal? We have five of nine. Um, so that is that. That is, um, change, change all your passwords. <laughs> um, so, there we have it. That's a taste of, oh, you keep those little, little keepsakes. Um, so there we have it. A little run around. Magic is my life. And, and, and really, John showed me the way to make a success of it. Um, like I said, it's not, you know, it's not easy, but I think it can be simple. You know, making a success of whatever it is that you have that, you want to build on. There are many people who have been in your position um, wanting to achieve something and now we're in this beautiful position in this, you know, this age today that these people have studied and written down textbooks and manuals for this and it is all out there and, and John shone the light and, and gave me these books and, and I hope for you that you know, even if it's one, one paragraph of, of one of these books, um, it helps you in your on your journey. So thank you very much and I'll see you very soon. It's a very good question. I, I feel like, there, for me, there's never been a moment where it suddenly clicked, or it just suddenly became a success, or, you know, it's, it's like, it's a daily grind. And even today, right, there are so many things that aren't quite there yet. And, and I guess with any of this, you know, as with fitness, I can't attest, but JP can, but, it, you know, it would be like a daily, daily thing to constantly be working. There's a, there's a book, it's one of the Robert Harris books, and he talks about modern cities and that retaining a modern city is a daily grind in the sense that if we ceased to work on the modern cities, it's a beautiful way he talks about it, the wolves would come back and the weeds would grow back and these cities would lose themselves to history again. And I think we are the same in terms of what we do and how we do it. So the first thing is um, it's a constant daily thing. And even now, I have, you know, on different levels, 
doubters and you know I come across it on all kinds of levels. Now we're doing TV, it just changes into someone else if you're saying no or saying that's not possible or that's not going to happen. Um, I think when you have a dream and you're passionate about something, a little bit of crazy is is necessary. And there's that Will Smith quote, being, being realistic is the most commonly traveled road to mediocrity, right? And if we overanalyze and we over strategize, we just, if we allow ourselves to think about it too much, that thing you go to bed and you think, well, I could do this, but I might do this, and that wouldn't be great. And there's very <coughs> rarely a moment in life when it's gonna be fly or die, right? Where it's either gonna take off and you're gonna be a billionaire with everything you want, or you're gonna be alone in a gutter, right? It's never really gonna to come to that. It's that thing where you're gonna have ups and downs, but stick with something long enough, and those ups and downs are gonna be basically growing and building. And, and that's still the case for me now today, you know? So I think a little bit of crazy, um, certainly never take advice from people who haven't done it, and that's a huge thing. Um, I, I'm a sucker for these quotes, and I, I put up on Facebook. We try to find a, um, I try to put up on uh, Facebook sort of things that make me buzz. And oh, these are, this is John. This is all, he's coming up here. Yeah, this is John's. I'm so sweet. Uh, this is his last thing he ever wrote. He said, "I may not be far from the end. I rather hope so, because when the quality of daily life goes, it really sounds good." Yeah, that, was, that was his last, anyway, amazing. Um, and this was, let me show you his first email. This was, this is what he wrote the first time. And this, literally, I read him a few lines, and this is what he wrote back. Um, and he finished this email by saying, I don't know how the other side of your life is going, but we sold droves of his publisher, he made money publishing. We sold droves of a book called How to Satisfy a Woman Every Time and Have Her Beg for More. <laughs> He said, to close our cover blurb, it really works. The first and only book that tells you exactly how. He said, okay, Drummond, only an idea. Only an idea. <laughs> uh, but anyway, so that was John. Uh, but I'm a sucker for um, putting up uh, these quotes and things online. And I wrote one. Here we go, this one, which I really like. Be weird, be unusual, don't take advice from people who bore you. And I think that's so crucial, is that there are so many people around us who will offer sensible advice or say, well, darling, do you know what? I think about this. And, and my rationale is if they haven't actually been there and done it, their advice is useless and they're as good as guessing, right? And it's important not to live other people's mentalities. And if I listen to advice from all manner of people around me, I'd be miserable in a job that I hated. Um, with nothing that I have now, and, and, and such a huge part of it is that I, I don't know if it borders on the arrogance to just go, let me show you, you know, I'm not going to ask you your opinion, I'm just, I'm really going to look forward to the day when I can show you that I did it, and I think Kanye West says success is the best revenge, right, that they're just, it's that thing someone says you can't do that, or it's probably not for you, or you're a little bit too sensitive, or you actually go, well, you know, I'm really going to look forward to the day when I can say, cheers, and I did that, and we can have a lovely little smile, and, and I know that I was right. <laughs> so there's definitely a bit of crazy, there's definitely a bit of not listening to people that bore you, or that just, just don't share that voracious appetite, that fire, that passion for something, um, and, and, and sticking at it. And also, I guess, Things like this, right? Surrounding your people, surrounding yourself with people that are on your journey, right? That are that are along there with you. Um, John, I think, really, certainly to a certain point, was the only voice. And he, in one of his emails, he said, "From what I know about, I know enough about you that I would back anything. That I would support you and back you in anything you wanted to do, right? So that he would he would help me out with that. And literally, that one paragraph." was the world to me, because I had so many people around me saying, magic's never going to work, and you should think about this, and qualify for this, and you can see your degree through, and, and literally John just saying, listen, I've got to go back, and I, I will, I'll be there, whatever you decide to do, meant the world. And I think just surrounding yourself by people that are on your journey and on your path, and share your little spark of crazy, um, <coughs> because ultimately the people do achieve and that do do remarkable things, and the people that will bold enough and crazy enough to think that they could, you know, and be a, um, what's he called, um, Elon Musk, is it Elon, Elon Musk, Elon Musk, or, you know, Steve Jobs, whoever it is, people that 
dream the crazy, even if they get halfway, are way above the pack, you know, way ahead of the pack. And, um, yeah, sorry, I'm running around, but I, I feel like, you know, retain your crazy, surround yourself by people that, that are on your wavelength, and um, that's, that's a lot of part of it, I think. Thank you very much. We're going to have to, we're gonna have to cut it. Sorry, I've gone on, but thank you so much. How can people get in touch with you? How can people follow you? Uh, is so it's or all insane? on. Uh, what are we doing? So it's, uh, let me find it. It's um, not this one. It's uh, social. Here we go. Here we go. Is this a trick? It's sadly not. No. There we go. So it's uh, so all this. It's, it's the DMC. So basically, DMC magic it's everywhere. Magic is what it is. So anywhere you wish. Nice, uh, consistent branding. Um, thank you very much. Yeah, it's all there. Cool. Thank you very much. Cool. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Amazing. I didn't actually know what we were going to get because I know he's an incredible magician and an illusionist, uh, but that was his first time doing this. So, did you all, did you all think he was good at doing what he was doing, delivering that message? Yeah. yeah. Would you all like to see him again? Show hands if you. Yeah. Good. So we're we're into something, okay?